so our next speakers are Artyom Kuprayenka. And yeah. uh, is it correct spelling? Almost. What is the correct? My familiar Kupriyanenka. Kupriyanenka. Okay, Artyom mm -hmm. Kupriyanenka and uh, Dmitry Kisley from the company OMG Games. Mm -hmm. uh, today, they will tell us how to use Unreal Engine at the intersection of games and movies. Yes, correct. The stage is yours, guys. Ah, okay. So we are on the air, yes? Correct. Okay, so we can, yes. we can go with our speech. Okay, hello for everybody. Nice to meet you all, guys. Unfortunately, I cannot see, see the stage. But I believe that uh, you're here and you see ours as well. And today we have to deliver some uh, part of information about our final project, final big project. So this project, it's a karate combat project. And it was finalized almost one year ago. Uh, and so that's pretty interesting because um, this project is, was super huge and it was combined a different field. So it was between the gaming industry, film industry, and architect industry. So just a couple of words about our company. I will present uh, what we are doing. So we have three different streams. So the first one is architectural visualization. The second one is gaming. And the third one, in the third part, it's a uh, film production. Uh, so we are almost 200 people now and we're still growing and uh, yes, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty unusual that we have three different streams, but I want to say that each stream supports each other. And uh, so when you combine it together, you can be able to make something like a karate combat project that combine everything in one big, big project. And we will tell about this tomorrow, sorry, today. Uh, Dmitry, Dima, can you tell a couple of words about yourself? Please. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. I greet all the participants and speakers of the conference today. Um, my name is Dmitry. I'm a project manager, maybe main project manager. I think Artem can agree with me. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. And uh, I have a lot of uh, gaming, uh, software development background, uh, different uh, uh, different uh, style of games. Uh, we we develop a lot of uh, cool three CG objects, three D graphics, and so on. But today we wanna we wanna explore with you again uh, one our amazing case, and uh, that mm -hmm. was our may, maybe biggest uh, biggest achievement in my career. That for sure, and uh, we want to share the experience with you, of course. Okay, let's start. Thank you. So, the first of all, I will explain what is the project. So, the Karate Combat project, it's a um, title. So, Karate Combat, it's a title that, uh, that uh, it's about the martial arts. It's about the fighting, about the karate. And the guy that works on this project uh, want to make the popularization of the karate sports. And uh, so, they are pretty interesting because they decided that karate fights can be much more, can be showed much more interesting. And they decided to make the different different backgrounds for uh, regular uh, martial arts. And the main idea was what the next. They tried to, and they just not to, just not to try. They made it. They shoot in uh, regular martial arts on the green screen. And after they want to replace this green screen with the different backgrounds, with the CGI background. And our team was part of the Karate Combat team and we made all 3d compositing and concept support yeah and today we will explain step by step how we made it and how we deliver uh, such a huge project why it's so why it's so huge because so the first of all the timing of the final video was almost uh, 416 minutes and we have to deliver this during the six months and when I'm talking six months, what I mean, does not mean that we all six months we have to spend just for the compositing and color correction, yeah? In this uh, phase, in these six months, we have to make the concepts, modeling, 
all optimization, renderings, compositing, color correction, and working with the tracking data. Yeah, and when you put together all this uh, part of the project, you can understand that for the compositing, you have just uh, one and a half months, one month you have on the concept, and uh, also you have to spend a lot of time for the optimization, renderings, etc. And today we will show how we achieve this result. So the first of all, the first of all, I want to show the final product and I will show how it looks, yeah? So let's start with the video. Please turn on your mic. Ah, yes, now you hear me? Much better, much better. Thank yeah, you. much better. Okay, uh, so this is the worst, uh, some short video that was uh, show the uh, general atmosphere, complexity, and style of the project. And you can see that it was combination between the real video and the 3D and it was made in almost in real time and with Unreal Engine 4, unfortunately not 5, because it was this project was made one year ago. Now I believe that, of course, we will would use Unreal Engine 5. Okay, what about the goals? So the first of all, our team was uh, created a different concept. It was three concepts uh, for the three different stages. And it was done in our team as goal number one. Goal number two, it's uh, special software. Because when we start to work with this project uh, and just trying to understand the pipeline, we understood that uh, it's not impossible or it's very hard to use just some regular software. Uh, because we have a lot of different parts of pipeline and it was very, very important to find some solution how to connect all this software together. And uh, during the process and before the process, we made some custom um, uh, software and plugins uh, with the Python to put together all stage of the pipeline. Goal number three, uh, we had to use the tracking data because, so we will tell about this a little bit later, uh, uh, more detail, but on a stage, on a pit, in the shooting process, we worked with the seven different cameras 
And one of the goal was the next, we have to use the tracking data from this camera and integrate this tracking data in Unreal Engine. We have to make the same camera pass in Unreal Engine to grab the sequence. So it was also something new because first time our company works with a type system that makes the tracking and uh, so it was something new, not just for us, because Skype is a pretty new system for, for industry in general. Render sequence, it's also the big, it's a big, big part of the project because you can imagine how many shots you can, you have to render if you have 460 minutes of video. It's tons of the shot. And uh, so we decided again, use an Unreal Engine because we understood that only in this case we can make render, render quickly. So we use maybe just one maximum, maximum one and a half seconds for, the, for one frame in the final quality, because that's unreal. Compositing and post-processing is also the goals, because uh, after all, we have to compose video and CGI the grounds. And this is, was one of the goals. Post-processing was also very important because uh, it's very important to merge real video and 3D and all of this was made almost in real time. Okay, let's go next. So the next slide, it's, uh, it's a screen about the team and Dima, can you tell a little bit more about the team that you are working yeah, with? Yeah, of course. Uh, thanks, Artem. Uh, the scale of this project required a team of equal size, of course. And uh, therefore, we gathered uh, um, a, a serious team of uh, specialists, like firstly me, like a project manager who handled processes on a global scale. In this particular case, it's more appropriate to name my position as executive producer, relevant to the industry of VFX, of course, but let's say project manager. Second, uh, very important person is creative director and art director, our uh, our very good friend, Andrei Yermakov. He was in charge for each visual uh, task for the for all visual part of the project. And uh, under his guidance was a team of concept artists working in 3DS Max, five persons. Then the Unreal Engine uh, team with uh, four persons inside. And uh, that was environmental artist, Dmitry Wittmann, and our good partners, 3D First Studio, with their team of uh, three people. And of course, the Department of 3D Modeling was also under the guidance of Andrei Makov with two very skilled modelers who created assets for our environments. Finally, the technical department it was represented by Alexander Kratinov. It's a technical supervisor of the project who has a wide range of expertise and outlook and um, really, I say without any exaggeration, uh, he thought through the entire pipeline of the project from the scratch, from the very beginning. And uh, his friend, uh, uh, technical specialist Dmitry Famishov, who were involved in work with tracking data and EDL. And the last, but of course not least, and practically the most important department is compositing. Uh, Alexei Sidorenko was in charge here as a technical supervisor, and the whole large team of composite artists, uh, it's uh, about 30 persons. So that yeah. was really a large team for such task. So maybe you can, you can show the next slide. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. So here you can see the main blocks of our uh, you know, composition of our team. So management block, uh, visual block, by Andrei Makov and uh, technical block uh, where uh, Dmitry Fomichov, uh, Alexander Kratinov and Alexei Sidorinka were working together. But uh, almost on the all stages, we were, our, our expertises intersected between each other. And we, we always, uh, we always solve some, solved some mutual tasks each time. Each time we, we came to some new uh, black box task, we should, uh, we should uh, decide how to act together like one team without separation on visual part, technical part and so on. 
Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, so I will re I will repeat that this project was include uh, three different spheres and three different competitions. So the first of all, we have to create architectural environment. Yeah, the second one we have to make everything game ready for Unreal Engine 4 with current and normally rate of FPS. And the third team was worked with the compositing. So uh, normally, classically, it would be better to divide this big project between the three different companies. But in our case, in our case, we decided that we can deliver everything just with this free team that we have in-house in an render company. Okay, let's do the next slides. So a couple of words about the software. So uh, as I told, the main soft uh, and the main product it was Unreal Engine. And why we choose this? So because, so it was very important to make everything in time. And we realized that if you will use, for example, for rendering, I don't know, another, some another engine like uh, Corona or Arnold or something else, or Houdini, for example, it, 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 it would be almost impossible uh, because the um, time for uh, rendering one frame um, in this case would be too big. And we tried to find a solution how to render this quickly, almost in real time. And of course, we know about the Mandalorian experience and we decided that it can be something like this. Uh, we decided that Unreal Engine is the best way in this case because, the first of all, we understood that the quality of images and quality of rendering now can be pretty, pretty nice, yeah? And at the same time, we can make this almost in real time. So this is the reason why Unreal Engine was the main product and main software in this project. Another software is pretty classical uh, because we are using the different software for to, for to make uh, a uh, concept, props, uh, uh, sculpting, uh, textures, etc. Um, we are using Fusion and Nuke for compositing, Premiere Pro for editing, and um, some some another soft, also Python, of course, to create in some additional software. Um, and the next slide is, I understand guys, it is pretty boring, but uh, it, this is, believe me, this is the last uh, technical, uh, not last technical, but it's last boring um, uh, slide, I believe, in this presentation. But we have to say a little bit about the pipeline. It was, it was, it was super important to deliver everything in time. Why? Because uh, this karate combat show was showed on the uh, Eurosport, on the TV, on HBS, and uh, we had no any chance to make some uh, delay in delivery. And as we told, we have just six months for this project, and you see that uh, number of stages is so huge. And thank you, Dima, for the strong management of this project, because uh, I don't know how you make it. I know that your work uh, whole 24 slash 7, then at night, but Dima with the team delivered everything in time. So it was also one of the uh, challenge for this project, day by day. Okay, let's go to the art part. And uh, we will tell a little bit uh, about the concept and about the environment. So, we and our partners from Karate Combat Show decided that in this season it would be great to show uh, three different environments. And so we tried to find some storytelling uh, for these three different environments. And we decided that it would be great to tell a story about the, a little bit about the karate history. Yeah. And we start with the Okinawa village. Uh, why? Because maybe somebody from you knows that Okinawa is a small village in Japanese, and a lot of karate masters and fighters was grown in the Okinawa. And this is a super popular place for all guys that, that, that know the sports well. And we decided that it would be great to start with the Okinawa village. This is some of the photos from the site. And after we go with our sketches, we just take a 3ds Max because for us it's 
pretty understandable and very, very simple instrument every day when we are works with the architectural visualization, we are using 3 Max, and we just go in with some of the sketches, we try to repeat uh, atmosphere and move, mood of Okinawa, but at the same time we have Pete and I'm talking about the fight piece, yeah? And for me, like, I'm an artist, and uh, for me it was not easy uh, artistic task how to combine this uh, modern and futuristic uh, pit with the old Okinawa. Unfortunately, I have no uh, the final idea about this, but it was one of the critical points for the... Um, for the producer of the show, that Pete can be the same in every concert. And we decided that uh, it can be some kind of time machine, and this time machine can move the speed from Okinawa to Hollywood and to New York, you know, yeah. So uh, this is the this is the Okinawa, it's some of our sketches. On the sketches, the most, the most important thing was mood, general, general atmosphere, detailization, etc. And so this is the some of the our internal job yeah so of course we counted the shape of the pit jewelry and we understood that around the pit uh, have to be a lot of people that have to be full of crowd and we, and we leave some space around the pit it's also just the sketches and let me show you some short video yeah some short video that will show uh, how Okinawa in final product will work with the pitch. Yeah. So some final shots, uh, just to give you an idea how it works and how it looks in the final. But a little bit later, we will explain in more detail, in detail, how it was composed, how it was rendering, etc. But in the final, it looked like this. I'm sorry about the quality. I'm not sure that your looks uh, that that looks for you crispy. Uh, maybe it's a little bit blur, but uh, believe me, guys, that in production quality it was super crisp. So the next one concept it's uh, Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Hills. Why we are decided to make the the Hollywood? So. Uh, the next step of the uh, karate development, it's, it's, it's Hollywood, it's of course Bruce Lee, and uh, we decided that uh, 1000, sorry Dima, can you help me with the data? Uh, no, uh, 80s, Hollywood 80s, 80s, I mean 80s in Hollywood, in the yeah, like, golden the era of karate and so on. Yes, correct. We decided that they can use Hollywood Hills, but not front view of the Hollywood Hills, that not everybody. We are try. we are decided that it would be great to use another side of the Hollywood Hills because it's a big plateau and uh, so it's also almost very, very famous place and you can see the whole Los Angeles. From this plate and you can see the famous Hollywood letters yeah so this is the concept from our client and after it goes with the blocking it's very very rough model rough, sorry rough row model with some kit bash models and after we of course we transform all of this in a final model for Unreal Engine also, let me show some of the uh, parts of this video. So it was challenging actually because, <laughs> as I told, uh, all compositing uh, was made almost in real time. And for us, it was very important to create the city uh, that, that, that um, have a moving of the cars, trains, lights, etc. It was a, also in 3D in Unreal Engine. And a little bit later, I will show the whole scale of this scene. Yeah, this is the Hollywood. And the third one uh, concept, it's uh, some, of, some kind of future. Yeah, so we decided that now we can dream about the future of karate. And we can put our actors, our fighters in some uh, future coliseum. It's our interpretation of Coliseum of Future. It's a big scale, it's a big, big stage. It's a stage or stand, stand, I think. Yeah, yeah? maybe it's uh... With a huge amount of crowd, almost 100,000 people can sit around and see how fighters uh, 
fight each other, I think, yeah? And uh, so it's, it has to be, uh, our idea is, was to make something very, very epic. And you can see that it's fly. You can see some big hole uh, in this area. And you can see a lot of, a lot of people around the pit yeah, and for me, this is the one of the best concepts. Why? Because it's pretty relevant with the original design of the pit. It's not our design, it's design of the, from the client and this pit travel from show to show and it's not impossible, it's not impossible to change the design. And we tried to create the last concept that pretty, pretty, so that, that has really good match between each other. Yeah, you can see that the design of the Coliseum works very good with the design of the, of, of the pit. And let's see some shots from this concept. I will remember that all this is a green screen. Only this part is real and all background, it's a Unreal Engine real time sequence. Yeah. It does look like this, okay? Dima, are you want to add something? Uh, yeah, I want to add that uh, the concert part, uh, we, 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 we actually passed the concert part very easily uh, comparing to the next parts of our project. But uh, that was very interesting and uh, very exciting work to create some new environment, uh, maybe not from the scratch, having the references from the client, but uh, you know, uh, but um, like uh, creating a lot of uh, artistic value in these environments because uh, we had a very cool team of uh, experiences, ex experienced artists and the guys had a lot of experience in architectural visualization of in creating different, um, different cities, uh, cities, districts and so on. And it was, for me, it was a pleasure to see how they work and how they uh, created their mind uh, in other worlds. Yeah. Yeah, but in our regular, regular project, we are trying to create real cities. In this case, we're trying to create something unreal. And that was a challenge for them as well. Yes, of course. Uh, so let's go on the next, on the next screen and what we can see. So when we approved all uh, concepts and uh, understand that everything works well with the beat and with the, our story we traveled to the budapest uh, on the shooting days so it was a pretty interesting experience because for us it also was the first time on the such a big uh, shooting stage let me show some of atmosphere from the stage and i will tell what is it uh, so, guys, for me it was a surprise, but uh, now I know that a lot of Hollywood movies uh, shooting in Budapest. So why? Because the Budapest have a lot of huge pavilions for shooting. And so it's a, the whole industry in, the, in the Hungary, in the Budapest. And uh, you can see the scale of the stage. It's pretty, pretty big pavilion. And I think that you can put the aircraft or even more in this pavilion. I just... Also, I, I want to add that even uh, Marvelous work in this stage. And uh, when we finalized our Karate Combat project, after us, Marvelous was shoot the video in the same place. So you can see how big the place, uh, you can see how a lot of people worked on this project uh, in parallel with, with our team. And when I try to count the uh, number of people that was on the shooting place, I realized that it was almost 200 plus 220 people. Why? Because uh, shooting team was almost 50 people. So you can see all of these people that works with the hardware, with the cables, with the cameras. Etc. It was almost 50 people. Uh, also, Karate Combat uh, team bring all fighters from the different part of the world. It was also 70 fighters. And uh, also around the team, they told uh, it was craft, craft of the different actors that uh, was simulate Chinese guys etc. And it was craft uh, almost with the 70 people. 
So general number of the people on the stage was almost 220 or something like this. And you can imagine how many logistics they made in the parallel with the shooting. Yeah. And uh, in the same time, Dima worked uh, online on a distance. Dima, tell us please a little bit. Yeah. About and uh, you know, uh, I want to add that uh, the most difficult thing in this situation was to maintain a constant real time synchronization with the team members who were physically on set, like our term. And uh, um, the team members who were here online, and we, we, we try to achieve the maximum effect of being on the set without being on the set for the rest of the team. And the number of different tasks and issues that we solved during continuous online video calls was truly impressive. And it's just oh, using smartphones sometimes, so you can imagine the bunch of work and uh, you know uh, I, I'm not mentioning about the interaction with um, with filming crew with technicians engineers uh, decorative artists and so on so on so on that was uh, that was uh, a lot of communication but we made it yeah I will add one important part let me make the stop on this uh, shot so uh, before to travel to uh, Budapest, it was one of the, so we have to make the draft of the scene in Unreal Engine. Why? You can uh, see that in real time, they made the king of the green screen and replaced this with our backgrounds. And it was very important to deliver this background with Unreal Engine with a good number of FPS. And when you will see the level of detailization of this uh, background, you will understand that it was really not easy task to make 25 or 30 FPS with a huge number of the polygons, details, trees, etc. But we are made this, and you can see that producers, engineers, technical artists was able to check how, how our backgrounds works with the actors in the real time on the stage. Uh, okay. Technical side. Yeah, and uh, I will uh, intrude here because we know about uh, the technical side of the project uh, for now, not too much. Uh, I mean, our dear uh, attendees, but uh, let me let me talk first of all about the tracking data because it's something maybe unusual for you. Maybe uh, this term is uh, is for you is like a black box. But I finally explain what is it. Uh, it's more about the specifics of VX production, which is used in classic film production, but uh, it plays a killer role in our production as well. Tracking data is information from a device that records any movement uh, of automatic and semi-automatic cameras on the side. Such information as um, uh, a focal lens, camera movement, uh, lens characteristics, camera number of ID, time codes, and so on uh, is uh, pure technical information. But when our filming is completed, this data is removed from the device and dig digitized into the desired format so that uh, uh, this data can be further processed. In fact, such a file with tracking data is a universal storage for all above parameters, and uh, we use this uh, in, uh, in further production to um, uh, divide uh, the sequences and to keep the constant tracking in real engine comparing to the real footage. Uh, so, what is the practical value of uh, tracking data on our project? Uh, very important to synchronize the actual shooting on the set with the CG background, Unreal Engine background in our case, so that it looks um, dynamic and realistic without noticeable defects. For example, a uh, focus mismatch when the foreground and background are both in focus or vice versa out of focus will be perceived by on-site viewer as a decoration set in the theater in the sense that it will look li uh, too lifeless and staged. Even a minimally observant person reads such moments and understands that the camera cannot shoot like that and it's all is unrealistic. 
Uh, also, it's very important to keep the exact movement of each camera. Once again, uh, I want to know that we load the tracking data directly into Unreal Engine, and this allowed uh, the camera to move correctly along the CG scene, repeating the same path from the set. At the same time, we render the backgrounds within the sequence of each camera. And that is if camera A shot is 35 minutes of material during the shooting day, then we render it all 35 minutes, the entire piece. But as you understand, uh, there was more than one shooting day. And there were also several cameras on the set, seven pieces to be exact. And therefore, this is a rather massive amount of work and considerable amount of time for rendering. But uh, our difficulties do not end there. Indeed, before inserting the tracking data into Unreal Engine, we had to process it in a special way. Cut into sequences, remove all errors from the tracking data code, and only then try to integrate it into the desired scene in Unreal. And uh, now about the most unpleasant, about mistakes. Well, with tracking data, we had a lot of challenges in our way. In some places, the tracking data was broken because for example, uh, electricity was lost once uh, during the shooting, and this directly knocks down the integrity and correctness of the entire recording. In some places, whole chunks of tracking data were missed when the device crashed or the signal disappeared. This also happens sometimes. And we dealt it and tried to restore the full sequence where it was not possible to fully reproduce the technical features of the shooting. We had to deal with manual tracking or match morph, in other words. At this stage, we used Nuke X and Mocha composite in the tracking program, like in the classic VFX pipeline. It's, it's usually impossible to achieve perfect match with manual tracking, but in the end, with the right amount of time invested, we were able to create as realistic camera moments as physically possible. In other words, even despite the problems with the client source materials, we managed to independently find a solution and keep the realism of the picture at the highest level. And uh, one more thing, uh, Arte mentioned the Python script. It was a very important part of our uh, project because uh, if he's speaking about the nuance of working with tracking data, uh, we had to cut it in the right way and make it automatically match to the sequences. And here, our technical lead, Alexander Kratzenov, uh, he perfectly thought out the terms of reference for the Python script development, and uh, our coder uh, made it from scratch. And it, it automated uh, our work at the tracking stage when comparing tracking data from the camera and the final editing of episodes from the client. Uh, thus, the use of this uh, mini software gave us the opportunity to cut the whole array of tracking data to the required segments, find the corresponding pieces, and then match them to the right areas of each episode editing. And uh, this way we solved our problem with uh, this matching of pieces, with uh, editing and so on. Well, I hope uh, you are not boring with the technical details, so our turn. <laughs> your turn. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, long story short, so we have to make, what we have to do, I will just make this short, yeah? Thank you for this information, of course, it's super important. But the main goal was to the next. We have to use camera pads from the real pit and put this camera pads to Unreal Engine without mistakes, millimeter by millimeter. Because we have to use, we have to grab from this camera sequence and put the sequence and match the sequence with the real video. Yeah. So this is the main idea and the main goal of the technical task. So, and let me show you uh, how looks our scenes. Uh, more detail. It was a huge, it was a big scene and our technical artists spent a lot of time to optimize it because as I told, for us and for technical team, on the stage was very important to keep minimum 25 FPS from the each scene, yeah? Because only in this case, they can make real time production on a stage. And only in this case, we, would, we were able to render all sequence in time and make delivery in time. But you can see that in this case, 
Uh, we have to create, recreate the biggest part or big part of Okinawa village. And you can see that we are doing the architecture, trees, uh, greens, forest, even uh, it's not like it's a sea. It's a big, 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 big LOD. Also, let me show the level of detailization for the Hollywood. It was very important to create all surrounding because in this case, you can see a lot of cars and cars keep the reflection from the surround and it was almost impossible to make some fakes. And this is reason number one why we are doing everything around the pit. And the another reason, this is why, this is because the camera on the real pit was work around the pit. And you can see almost 360 degrees uh, environment around the pit. Again, a lot of details, a lot of different stuff, a lot of reflections, real 3D city. And thank you for Unreal Engine specialists that make this product because I even can imagine that how they can suffer 25 or 30 FPS in this number of, of, of models, but it was. And let me show the new arena. And so the biggest challenge in this case was the crowd. As I told, it was almost 100,000 people that was placed on the uh, Dima, what is it? It stands, actually. On the stands. Gal Gal Galaxy Arena. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so we made some R&D process how to make it better. And uh, we tried to do this with the 3D people. It works well, but uh, the quality of the speed ball was not enough for us. And we decided that we can shoot people on the green screen, make the cutting, keying of these people put these people on the planes and scattering this plane around the stands. We made some tests and decided that it looks pretty, pretty nice for us. And again, you can see the scale of the new arena. Yeah, and we, of course, we spent some time to put together all this thing and make this workable. And after this, we will go to the tracking and sorry, not tracking, maybe compositing is better to say, yeah. And now let me show you some of the uh, compositing process. And Dima, if you want to add something, it's pretty good time to add. Well, the music. <laughs> ah. I don't want to interrupt it. Let's do next. Yeah. Does that, does I think well? I, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you outlined uh, a lot of our Unreal Engine features. Uh, it's our project, but uh, I can add that uh, why was the Unreal Engine the best fit for the project in our case? In general, the answer is obvious. It has all the necessary tools, not only for creating uh, realistic graphics, but also for high quality virtual production and offline rendering. And in our opinion, Karate Combat project uh, is very different from game development in Unreal, but at the same time, it inherits uh, certain principles from game development. For example, offline rendering allows us to drastically increase uh, the detail of our materials, meshes, and lighting in this scene, which would be quite difficult to achieve using a standard game real-time renderer. Speaking of lighting, the pit on set was lit up with a lot of light, and we had to recreate it in our scene. Therefore, in each environment, we added different light sources, you can see them here, uh, inherent in that area. For example, paper lanterns for Okinawa, portable sport lights for Hollywood, and flying billboards and with advertisements for Neo Arena. In this way, we are able to match the footage uh, and CG material in terms of setting the lights in the frame. And it, that was a quite a challenge, given that the lighting artist from the other team on the filming set didn't prepare enough practical lighting equipment for us and for our purposes. Uh, also, I can add that here we used, of course, very popular ray tracing technology. We use it extensively to improve the quality of the image in this scene. Uh, also, a scene filled with a lot of interactive objects, including fake spectators, but Artem already told about them and about the specific using that 
And the final stage of uh, our Unreal Engine production, and the very important and very difficult, was optimization and rendering. Since the pipeline involved post-production based on footage, real footage, we used the movie render queue tools, and in particular, pass-by-pass -pass rendering. In order to get the best performance from this scene uh, and minimize the render time, we went through five iterations of optimization process without missing a single detail that could be worked on. And uh, that was a very painstaking work, I, I guess you can imagine. Uh, given the fullness of the scene with objects and elements uh, on each meter, square meter. And, uh, but in the end, the result was impressive. And the final versions of these soft rendered sequences were transferred to the compositing department. And I think uh, Artem can add a few words about compositing because it's the most boring and the most technical part. But very, very important and useful, of and, course. And the biggest part of our project. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, guys, that's almost the final, uh, it's almost finished of our presentation. Now you can see some final shots from the show. And yes, from my side, I want to add that I think that, yeah, Unreal Engine is a key product in this process, of course. And uh, so now we are goes with the Unreal Engine 5, and you know that it works much, much more better. And I believe that the future of the commercial industry, films industry, will be pretty, pretty matched with the Unreal Engine and with the technologies that we are using in this project. So thank you so much. And if you have some questions, we will, with a big pleasure, we'll, we'll answer on it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the story, guys. It's very impressive. Like the huge projects that is made within six months uh that sounds like really awesome i can understand uh, understand more or less like how much work was done uh in it um uh, yeah so uh was it actually the biggest project that you developed in your career if you are talking about the one project yes it's the biggest yeah okay okay nice because um, as I told, almost 50 people works in this project. It's 25% of our studio and they works almost 24 slash 7 the whole time. It was yeah, not easy. Yes. If you summarize the team size, the efforts, the timeline, the budget, so that's, yeah, the most significant uh, project in our experience, I guess. Mm -hmm. As I understand, uh, your company uh, is based in Ukraine and uh, United States, is it correct? Yes, you're absolutely true. And what part of the team uh, uh, is located in Ukraine, actually? Uh, so now it's uh, something between 25-35% because mm -hmm. you know that we have a war now and another part of the team now has relocation uh, with a year on a euro in the different countries. Some people in Portugal, some people in Poland, etc. Mm -hmm. I got it. Uh, but in Ukraine, it's uh, people only kind of, uh, I mean, developers, they don't do any kind of motion control uh, stuff and so on. Motion control? Honestly, we did not make some works with the MoCAP. Okay. I'm not talking about this because, so in this case, task, it's not about the MoCAP. Yeah? And we are not doing a lot of cinematics. For mockup job, this is the reason why we are not using these technologies. But you have certain plans to try <laughs> this this area, I guess. Maybe in some not not far future, you will see. Yeah. So in this case, we make mockup for seven cameras. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got it. Yeah, that sounds like really impressive. Uh, mm -hmm. I. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't think that we have any more questions now. So, mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for your talk. I wish you all the best. And I hope that you will work on uh, the bigger and bigger projects. And you will bring uh, some other stories uh, to us soon. Thank you so much, Stu. Thank you for uh, opportunity to tell about this project in your conferences.
hope that that this is not, not last time. <laughs> and she will invite us again with something new. And see as, you. Soon, as soon as you have something new, you're you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah thanks so much for, for this opportunity and. Uh, I wish the best of luck to all, us all and uh, stay safe, of course. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.